let us look to the Lord in prayer. Precious Saviour, mighty Lord, we thank you for the experience of resurrection that we enjoy today. The experience of new life that we celebrate today. Even as we spend some time meditating on your word and worshipping you this morning, we pray that we will be able to experience your presence. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Today's Old Testament reading is taken from Ruth, chapter 2, verses 1 to 18. Now Naomi had a rich relative named Boaz from Elimelech's family. One day, Ruth, the Moabite, said to Naomi, I am going to the fields. Maybe someone will be kind enough to let me gather the grain he leaves behind. Naomi said, Go, my daughter. So Ruth went to the fields and gathered the grain that the workers cutting the grain had left behind. It just so happened that the field belonged to Boaz from Elimelech's family. Soon Boaz came from Bethlehem and greeted his workers. The Lord be with you. And the workers answered, May the Lord bless you. Then Boaz asked his servants in charge of the workers, Whose girl is that? That servant answered, She is the young Moabite woman who came back with Naomi from the country of Moab. She said, Please let me follow the workers cutting grain and gather what they leave behind. She came and has remained here from morning until just now. She has stopped only a few moments to rest in the shelter. Then Boaz said to Ruth, Listen, my daughter, don't go to gather grain for yourself in another field. Don't even leave this field at all, but continue following closely behind my women workers. Watch to see into which fields they go to cut grain and follow them. I have warned the young man to not to bother you. When you are thirsty, you may go and drink from the water jugs that the young men have filled. Then Ruth bowed low with her face to the ground and said to him, I am not an Israelite. Why have you been so kind to notice me? Boaz answered, I know about all the help you have given your mother-in-law after your husband died. You left your father and mother and your own country to come to a nation where you did not know anyone. May the Lord reward you for all you have done. May your wages be paid in full by the Lord, the God of Israel, under whose wings you have come for shelter. Then Ruth said, I hope I can continue to please you, sir. You have said kind and encouraging words to me, your servant, though I am not one of your servants. At mealtime, Boaz told Ruth, Come here, eat some of our bread, and dip it in our sauce. So Ruth sat down beside the workers. 
Boaz handed her some roasted grain, and she ate until she was full. She even had some food left over. When Ruth rose and went back to work, Boaz commanded his workers, let her gather even around the piles of cut grain. Don't tell her to go away. In fact, drop some full heads of grain for her from where you have in your hands, and let her gather them. Don't tell her to stop. So Ruth gathered grain in the field until evening. Then she separated the grain from the chaff, and there was about one half bushel of barley. Ruth carried the grain into town, and her mother-in-law saw how much she had gathered. Ruth also took out the food that was left out from her lunch and gave it to Naomi. Here ends the reading. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of her heart be acceptable unto thee, O Lord, our Rock and our Redeemer. Amen. Greetings in the precious name of the risen Lord. We continue our meditation on experiences with the risen Lord. Today, we are called to meditate on the experiences of the Lord in workspaces. I would, however, draw your attention to the Old Testament passage that we heard read today from Ruth chapter 2, verses 1 to 18. The context of the return of migrant workers, a context very similar to what we are experiencing today and this new rush of the pandemic. Naomi and her husband Elimelech went to a foreign land with their sons Mahlon and Kilion. But life did not turn the way they expected it to be. Though the sons married the women of the land, the three men of the family passes away in a catastrophe. And now it's left for Naomi to decide what to do. And like what people are dis deciding all over the world, she decided to go home. And therefore she called her daughters-in-law and said, you can go back to your kith and kin. One of them, Orpa, kissed her and returned. But Ruth, the other Moabite daughter-in-law said, your God shall be my God, your people shall be my people, and I shall come back with you to your own land. And that's how Naomi and Ruth came back to their own land. Now, after coming to their own land, Ruth, the Moabite, the foreigner, had to find work. And therefore, Naomi decided to send her to the workspace of one of their kindred, Boaz. And this meditation would be based on Boaz and how he treated Ruth in the workspace. Migrant workers, death, widowhood, leaving spaces, coming back, returning home, being foreigners in another's homeland, being guest workers. These are all words that we heard very, very clearly during this time of the pandemic. People suffer in workspaces much more than we could imagine, much more than we expect. And now here, let us look at how godliness was manifest in the life of boss. Primarily, we understand that there is a plan of God in the entire episode. Sometimes, we are not able to understand pain, understand catastrophes, understand setbacks, because we do not see the larger picture. We do not see the future. Here, Ruth, coming to the workspace of Boaz, perhaps was an accident in human sight, but that was a plan of God where David and his lineage has to be decided, including the foreigner, where the line of Jesus would have to be fixed properly. And therefore, when Boaz returns to her field, to his field, he realizes that there is a new person in the field. And therefore, greeting everybody, he said, the Lord be with you, and notices this particular woman. He asked the persons around him, who is this woman? And he gets to know exactly who this person was. 
whose daughter, whose daughter-in-law, where does she come from, what is the situation, all those realities, including the reality that her husband, father-in-law have died and they have returned from a foreign land and is seeking subsistence. Dear friends, the heart, I would call it the passion to know the other. The plan of God, the passion of the heart to know the other as to what their life circumstances is, what are the challenges that they face and how life is to them. Once this happens, he assures her, now do not worry about your job and job security. The third P I would want to draw your attention to is the permission that Boaz gives Ruth to work around his workspace, around his field, to glean from the edges of his field. He tells them, do not seek other places. Feel secure here. You shall come here anytime you want and get what is gleaned from the field. Dear friends, here is a reality that we should ask ourselves. The godliness of a welcoming space, the godliness of an inviting space, the godliness of a permitting place, is that the reality of the workspaces around us today? We then see the protection that Boaz offers Ruth. She assures him that you shall be safe in the workspace. No one will touch you. Four times in this particular chapter, we read this assurance that nobody shall touch you. Well, safety in workspaces is a challenging reality today. Several people, especially guest laborers, foreigners, they face verbal abuse. They face emo emotional abuse, sometimes physical abuse. And therefore, godliness in workspaces is the provision for protection for each person who works in our spaces. And that provision for protection should be more so for the vulnerable people, more so for the migrant people, more so for the foreigner, more so for the people who do not perhaps have their papers right. Safety, workspace safety, ensuring safety for all, dear friends, is godliness manifested in workspaces. The next P that I would like to talk to you about today is the provisions that is provided in the workspaces for this vulnerable worker. Boaz tells them, you shall have water to drink. Not that like any other foreigner would do, you will draw water and the native would drink. Here it would be the other way around. The natives, my people, shall draw water and keep it in the vessels and you shall have the freedom and the right to drink from that water. He also says, you shall have enough food to eat. You can come. Dip your bread in the curry with us and eat together. Provisions of water, provisions of food to people who are in crisis, to people in migrant spaces, people in traveling spaces, people in transition phases. is a very important theme. We should be thinking seriously during this time. Perhaps mostly due to the pandemic and many a times for other reasons, people are fleeing to other spaces. People are fleeing the workspaces they are used to, to other spaces, vulnerable spaces. And in those vulnerable spaces, making provisions for water, making provision for food, making provision for their health safety is surely a manifestation of godliness. 
And then there is this comforting reasoning intervention with this person, giving them the promises of the Lord. Well, when people become weak, when people become vulnerable, when people become sad, when people expose themselves to self-pity, we need assuring presence in that context. He says, I am a foreigner. I am a foreigner. About eight times in the book of Ruth, we find Ruth addressed as a Moabite, a foreigner. But here, the response of Boaz is encouraging her to cleave to the promises of God. He tells her, you trusted in the ways of the Lord. You had faith in your mother-in-law and came. Trusting in the Lord, I want to promise you, the Lord would reward you. Yes, the now is painful. The now is a vulnerable now. The now is a now of anxiety. But since you have trusted in the Lord, cling on to this promise. The Lord will surely reward you. The comfort with which he spoke. He spoke about the providence of God, divine providence. We also see that Boaz compensated Ruth properly. She had enough to take back home. The concern about people in the home was there with the master and she was given enough to share with those at home. Payments. Dear friends, godliness in workspaces is manifest through proper payments. People talk about salary cuts. People talk about no salary. And we have had the painful experience of knowing of those who were not paid throughout Corona days. Painful experiences of our own colleagues. Dear friends, godliness in workspaces in crisis times is all about ensuring that people who work are compensated for the work they do, sometimes beyond the work they do. This particular text also talks about preferences. Ruth was a Moabite, a foreigner, but a foreigner was given more preference than others in the field. He did not bother about complaints that would come. He would not bother about what others would say. But he arranged for enough sheep for her. He even told them, let her not just be gleaning from those in the peripheries, the margins. Bend down sheep for her so that she would be able to take the sheep staying as a gleaner. The thin line between the gleaner and the reaper is being redrawn by Boaz so that justice and fairness is ensured. And workspaces, godliness in workspaces is that the thin line between the gleaner and the reaper is erased so that justice is given to the gleaner taking them to the position of the reaper, having enough for their life. And finally, this particular text tells us that each of those acts where we manifest godliness in our workspaces, we are participating in the making of the future of God. We are participating in the maker, making of God's mighty plan unfurling. Well, Ruth and Boaz, met at this workspace. Ruth and Boaz knew each other at his workspace. Ruth and Boaz decided that they would surely marry as Ruth accepted Boaz as the Goel, the Redeemer. And in that marriage, Obed was born to Obed Jesse and to Jesse David and down in the line of David came Jesus. The mighty plan of God the mighty act of God, being manifest in workspaces. Dear friends, 
A pandemic has redefined our workspaces. Working from home is a new word that we hear today. Losing jobs, moving spaces, new areas of migration are realities that we live with today. And in that new reality, we today were told about the mighty plan of God in and through all these things. The provisions of God made manifest in our interaction with people. The permission we grant to people to have job security. The protection we offer to people for safe workspaces. The provisions of water, food and livelihood. The promises of God to trust on when they become weak. The providence of God to be shared with people, proper payments, preferences of the marginalized people and encouraging all to be participants in the making of the future of God. Our godliness in workspaces is the call of the Corona times. It's the call of the difficult times. Let us, let us manifest godliness in our workspaces. Let people see the presence of the risen Lord in the way we express ourselves in our workspaces. Let's pray. Gracious Lord, this morning, we specially pray for all those people who face crisis in workspaces, who are thirsty and hungry, who are not properly compensated, who feel unwelcome, who feel unsafe, who feel unsecure. We pray that your grace would raise up people who would manifest godliness in workspaces so that akin to the experience of the risen Lord with us, we would provide godly spaces for people to work in a context of great anxiety, anguish and pain. Help us, Lord, to be channels of godliness in workspaces and reach out to people, turning them from gleaners to reapers. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen. Shall we pray the Lord's Prayer together? Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Receive the benediction in faith. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, 
the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit rest and abide with each one of you now and forevermore. Amen.